Hey everyone, today we're putting out a PSA, public service announcement, about modular cables on modular power supplies and uh, how to avoid making mistakes that could cost you. So I'm joined by Patrick Stone here. He's helped me at the site for a number of years now behind the scenes and at CES, things like that. Patrick, you helped me uh, understand a bit better previously some of the concerns with modular power supplies. I think we can go over that today. So first question that we should talk about why don't we mix and match cables between modular PSUs? Yeah, so it's kind of tricky in that a lot of PSUs like to use the same actual connector. So right. let's take uh, a standard manufactured PCI Express connector. So inside the power supply is the female version of that connector. And on the end of the cable is the male version of that connector. But then on one manufacturer's cable, the red and the yellow and the black are in one spot. Mm -hmm. And then on the other manufacturer's cable, they kind of switch it up. Right. You got to look out for that kind of stuff. And that's because cables actually are standardized. So this is a question that I, I kind of saw posted. There's, there's two different ends of the cable, right? And one end, aside that you may have that plugs into your... Molex, your SATA, your PCIe devices, the CPU power on the motherboard, 24-pin power, those are standardized. If you plug in a cable from any one of these PSUs on the table into a video card, it will be the same. I like to call that the device side. Right. So device side we know. What we don't necessarily know... Is the power supply side. Right. And man, those... And so the crazy thing is, a lot of the times you're not going to run into any trouble because you're going to have some that have this uh, narrowish connector on it, and then some that have this big, fat, wide right. three by three connector on it, and then you got some that have the PCI Express connector on it. I think the places where you get into the most trouble, the places where I've seen the most mix up, is with the Molex style connector and the PCS. PCI Express style connector. Those are the two Just I've seen the most. peripherals in general too, because SATA uses generally the same as Molex. So in this specific instant, instance, I've got two cables from two different power supplies. This is a Silverstone cable. It goes to this power supply. Mm -hmm. This is an EVGA one. And they even have the same, you know, they're not sleeved differently. <laughs> same Easy sleeving. to confuse. So, uh, Really, the, the problem here is if we just look at the ends of these cables, the wires aren't in the same place. So if I plug this into the Silverstone cable, or into power supply, EVGA, into Silverstone, what we end up with is, uh, in this instance, you know, yellow and red are in two completely different spots. Yeah, not good. And it depends. I haven't tested this and plotted it out specifically, so the damage may vary or may even not be visible depending on the device you plug in. Mm -hmm. And that's because uh, when you're plugging in devices to a power supply, to a cable, they use different voltages, right? So fans, the fan we have on the table, and we'll talk about the coloring in a moment, is a 12 volt fan. We can see that by looking at the label. Yep. That's 12 volts. This only cares about 12 volts and ground. So if you plug in something like a, uh, let's, let's say like a fan, maybe not a fan hub, but a controller of some kind, uh, Corsair controllers, things like that. The controller may be a different voltage. It may be the same. It could be 12, it could be 5. And if it's 5 volts uh, and you plug in a 12 volt device, then you don't have an expected result necessarily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so really, the way I think about it is you've got three possibilities. Your first possibility is you get really lucky and the different manufacturers' cables match up. Right, it could work fine. The second possibility is the cables are in the wrong spots, so you have incomplete circuits, which means no current flow. Mm. Once again, pretty lucky. Right, yeah, no, third, no damage necessarily. Yeah. Third but possibility is red is where yellow should be, yellow is where red should be, orange is where black should be, <laughs> and we have reverse polarities, overcurrents, overvoltages, all kinds of bad happening. Right, feeds into other components, power supply, and there may be protections in the power supply or in whatever component it Usually is. Usually are. Right. But uh, they will only protect you so much. And it's when you're mixing and matching specifications, there's no guarantee that anything works like it should. That's exactly right. Because it's not designed to handle it. Uh, so there are different voltages coming out of the power supply, generally 3.3, 12, 5, 
uh, and, and then your black cable as well, as you can see here. Those need to line up. I guess when in doubt, uh, check the manual. Yes, or... absolutely. Re re read your documentation. Yeah. Uh, if your power supply has a label on it, just make sure you read the label. Um, if you have a little manual, I mean, I like to think that people that are doing what we do, people that like to build systems, mm. are usually pretty intelligent people. And you know, take take five minutes, read the five page manual. The and it just to uh, a point here, it may not be in there what specific pin layout is in the power supply, because they might. Why would they define it? Because they sell you the thing, and you're supposed to use their cables with their thing. That's a good point. Uh, so if that's the case, and you're like. Where did this cable come from? <laughs> I think it came from the one I'm using. If you think that, stop. Like, get rid of it. Uh, now, if you really need that cable, you can check. Yes. Right? You can do a continuity check mm -hmm. and see, uh, see if the pins align. And if they do, then, hey, maybe it was from the power supply you were about to put it in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, if... When he said continuity check, the thing to use multimeter right here, uh, you can even you can even do some other types of testing, which he's shown in some earlier videos. I remember from a couple of years DBI, ago. Yeah, yeah, and like uh, then like you can you can trick a power supply into turning on, and you can even do like voltage checks to make sure right. that if you have a yellow wire, you're getting 12 volts out of it, and if right. you have a red wire, you're getting five volts out of it instead of some voltage that you're not supposed to be getting. Um, so multimeters can be a good check, uh, right. but like you said, if you're not sure, you stop. Yeah, be patient. You know, analyze the situation, investigate what's going on. Yeah, and uh, multimeters. We're not going to do a tutorial here today on how to do a continuity check. It's very easy. I'm sure there's a million of them on YouTube. Just check. Um, you can back probe if you have to, depending on the pinout. You can back probe one end. You probe the other end. Does it make a? Is it continuous? And if it is, then you know which which end of which cable on one end goes to which pin on the other end. Yep. And that's what you need to know to know if something works. Uh, so I think that covers the basics. Now, quick Q, FAQ type things to go through. One of the common questions I've received is, uh, let's let's do this one first. Why are they not standardized on the power supply side? They're standardized on the device side. I think that goes uh, back to the manufacturers saying to themselves, hey, this is our power supply. We have provided you cables with it. There's really no reason for us to have to be the same as other manufacturers. Right. Is that kind of where you're coming from too? Yeah, I think so. There, there is an argument to be made for standardization, and it's mostly to protect the users. But you have things like this one, which I can't get out. There we go. <laughs> uh, this is a universal header on this particular EVGA unit. Uh, coincidentally, not compatible with other EVGA units. <laughs> so even with it, now obviously you can't screw this up. This won't go in yeah. there. <laughs> but uh, the point is, even between the same vendor, right, there's no guarantee that one Corsair PSU to the next, or EVGA or whomever, it will uh, transfer cables. The reason for that is things like this, where EVGA said, we're going to sell an expensive power supply. It will have universal headers. They can plug in anywhere. Yeah. That's a feature we want to charge money for. Mm -hmm. Another option, Rosewell off the top of my head has an older power supply. They plug in the end and they've got LEDs around where the connector is. So that's the thing they wanted to do. So that's yeah. a reason to not standardize them. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, next thing to talk about is the keying. So I saw some folks saying, well, you, you shouldn't be able to plug this into another one because they, if you can, then they keyed it wrong. Yeah, that's not, that's not true either. <laughs> right. that, that goes back to what we talked about near the beginning of the video where we were just talking, hey, uh, the, these little connectors that, that you plug into the power supply, not, not like this one for, per se, but like this one right here. Right. It, it's, it's an off-the-shelf PCI Express connector. And they're using those because they're inexpensive and easy to get a hold they of. They sell them by the millions, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, it's... It's uh, it's cheap. Why not? You're putting it on one end already. Mm -hmm. Why not put it on two ends uh, and call it a day? And now normally, uh, for a PCI Express cable, you'll have eight pins going into the power supply, yep. and coming out you'll have maybe six or six plus two. Yep. And for Molex, you'll have six out of the power supply, 
and then your Molex out of the other side. Yes. But the point is, the connect the plastic itself is the same. Yeah. Uh, so the, there's nothing really to do with keying. It's just that the, why would you customize a special keying for your device? Yeah, it's not, more expensive. Yeah, exactly. And y you guys don't want to pay more for your stuff, do you? <laughs> I, I, and, and some people do. And if you do, you got stuff like that where it's literally impossible to screw up. Yeah, true. <laughs> but you also end up in trouble, you know, for other specific scenarios. We won't talk about that. But uh, yeah, I, I think that covers most of it. I don't know. Is there... Anything else we should mention here? That, that's really it. I, I, the only thing that I would like to say, just to kind of sum everything up, is this. If you're working with a power supply and you plug everything in and then you hit the button and you feel like something's not right and it doesn't behave the way you want it to, then time out. Hit the power switch on the back for good measure. You got it. And make sure it's shut down. Power down your unit. Check everything again. You just spend a bunch of money on all this computer equipment. Protect your investment. Right. Check everything. Spend 10 minutes checking everything again, and then go back and try again. And uh, as a uh, 10 years ago when I built my first system, I remember missing a cable. I think it was an EPS 12 volt. It happens all the right? time. Right? Yeah, and it's not a big deal uh, if you're if you kind of stop and look at yeah, it. Yeah, that's the but key. But it, it can become a big deal. Exactly um, right. So, uh, yeah, stop and check. If you ever have questions where you're like, man, this is pissing me off. I'm frustrated. I don't get it. Tweet at us, at GamersNexus. I'll try to help you out um, because that's what we're here for. So, uh, yeah, I guess it boils down to uh, they really, you should, the cable shouldn't get mixed anyway to begin with. Agreed. If they do, because maybe you just don't know this is a problem or you have a million power supplies like we do and it happens, uh, Try and figure out what's right. Otherwise, get rid of it. Buy another one straight from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And then in the future, throw your cables for each unit into a bag. Label the bag, you know, EVGA 750 G2L, whatever. Yep. Uh, yeah. Organization, always a good thing. Yeah, it saves time later, as we've learned here. So <laughs> uh, I think that's it for now. As always, Patreon link in the post-roll video to help us out directly making more content like this. And links in the description below for more information, pinout charts, things like that that you've seen in this video. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time. See anything out there? <laughs> Hang on, I gotta use my scopes. <laughs>